But if you were to give a 30 second pitch, it doesn't have to be 30 seconds, but your elevator pitch to Philadelphia's Hispanic community, which is the largest minority population in the city, uh, what would you say to them? I would say that I am you and I want to see you succeed the same way I want to see every single minority succeed. And I'm here for you and I will always be here for you. What would you say were the top three concerns for Latino voters in the last election cycle? The treatment uh, by police and the way license and inspection uh, treats the um, treats the uh, the the Hispanic business owner. I think that's like number two. OK, so we have number one, the way the police uh, were treating the Hispanic business owner. Number two the way license and inspection was in treating the, uh, was treating the Spanish business owner. And number three, uh, the disrespect that, that the way I feel that police have disrespected the Hispanic community. Many Hispanic business owners have called me out to see certain things that have happened in their business. Like when if the police have come through and they turn off their cameras in the, in the store while they do whatever it is that they do in the store, um, I've seen that, I've been there uh, after the fact, and I've, I've, I've gone to the stores where license and inspection uh, would meet and, and I've seen what was complained about and, and how long it would take to resolve the problem. So these are things that I have seen straight hand. So here is some information from, from the 2022 midterms, uh, particularly about Pennsylvania Latinos. They were most worried about uh, crime, uh, the economy, I think everybody, <laughs> everybody, that was the hot button conversation all, all throughout, and um, abortion. So how would your campaign going forward uh, address the community, the Latino voting community, uh, with that in mind? And how would you galvanize folks who, who aren't registered? Because here's what the data tells us. Latinos who are registered to vote will most likely vote. They will go to the polls and they will cast, they will cast their ballot. The opportunity or, or the gap is that they're not registering to vote. The incoming young voters who've just turned 18 or just moved from another country, whether it's Puerto Rico and they already have a passport or whether they're uh, just becoming naturalized citizens um, and they're, they're not feeling like involved in the electoral process. So knowing this, how, how would you approach that voting community? Well, there, there's two aspects. First, I believe in women's rights. So as far as the abortion issue is concerned, um, that's, the woman has to make that particular determination. So that's not for me to, uh, to step in. As far as the galvanization, you have to look at what you have to look at what I'm, what I'm bringing to the table. I'm bringing to the table the way that's going to uplift every poor community in Philadelphia by the bootstraps and turn it around within a two to three year period of time. Where Philadelphia, with my programs uh, put in operation, Philadelphia is a different city. How would you get that message directly to them, though? Well, it's because, up to you. Because the reason, well, the reason they're not voting is because they felt 83% um, of voters, uh, or of those surveyed, I'm sorry, 83% of those surveyed in that study said that they don't hear from the politicians, they don't hear from their campaigns, they don't know what the platform is about. When asked, you know, if they supported their public safety policy, they would say, well, you know, I haven't really heard them talk about, but you're saying the onus is on the community to find this out? No, the onus is on communications to put this out. You have to let me know where the people are that want to hear, and I'll go to them. I will explain to them what's going on by, 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 by giving me a, a, a voice. Then I, I can tell people and I can show people why this is going to be so beneficial to you and your families, why it's going to be so beneficial to your neighborhood, 
why it's going to be so beneficial to the city. I'm a person. I walk the streets and I meet people, but that's one-on-one. -on -one. The voice has to come from the media. You have to show the people the programs and guide them as to what programs appear to be beneficial and what programs appear not to be beneficial. That because, because you are the voice of the people. I am the voice of myself and I want to become the voice of the people, but in order for me to become the voice of the people, I have to speak through you.